Today we're going to be interviewing Professor Stephen Rose and talking about the issues that are raised by the Mind the Gap. Stephen, would you start off by telling us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do? Sure. Well, I'm Stephen Rose. I'm professor or now retired professor of biology at the Open University. I'm a neuroscientist and I've spent most of my life researching on the way the brain works, and particularly the way that um, memories are made inside the brain. And uh, what exactly is meant by the term neuroscience? Officially, neuroscience is the study of the brain and the study of the central nervous system. That is, the molecules of which it's composed, the genes which help construct it, the cells, the way they're connected, the way the electrical processes inside the brain work, and above all, um, the relationship of our brains to, our, or animals' brains, to our behavior or animals' behavior. Is there any particular area of neuroscience that excites you more than others? And if so, why? I'm incredibly interested in memory, partly because memory is very important for all of us. Um, it's what constitutes us as, as individuals if our, our lives are made of our memories. But also because it seemed a very good way of trying to understand the relationship between brain processes, what's going on inside the brain when um, animals learn and remember things, uh, because they can then do very interesting experiments which try to map that relationship. So with today's scientific knowledge and the technology that we have, what exactly do we know about the brain? I never know how to answer that question. I mean, we know a lot about the way that um, individual cells work, the um, ways in which the electrical signals between, which um, um, are transmitted between one cell and another work. We know about how particular drugs work on the brain. We know in the case of the human brain, for example, the different parts of the brains which are responsible for or associated with everything from vision to smell to motor activity and so on. We know some things about what goes on, goes wrong in brain diseases like Alzheimer's disease and so on. What we can't do um, and I think that that's a major problem at the moment, is we have no way of putting it all together. Um, we don't have a grand theory of the way the brain works. I mean, in biology, there are grand theories like evolution. There are grand theories like DNA. And, uh, but there is no grand theory of the brain, and that's what we're lacking. What are the positive things about our increasing understanding of what goes on in the brain? I really do believe that understanding how the brain works helps us understand who we are as, as, as human beings and what it is to become a human, what it is to become a person with memory, with conscious awareness and so on. What about illnesses or conditions like addiction? If we're able to cure or remove these from our brains, what are the knock-on effects of that? Well, then you have to wonder whether those are those something like depression is really quotes a disease inside the brain, um, and whether looking for treatments by taking by new chemicals is the right way around. If I tell you that if you are an unemployed mother living in a high-rise block in inner city London or Birmingham or Manchester, you are overwhelmingly more likely to be diagnosed with depression than if in fact you are um, in a stable relationship and, uh, and good economic conditions. Um, you'll see that a lot of the causes for depression are far more likely to be found in the social world than they are in understanding the biochemistry. I think we need to create a happier society rather than worry about manipulating brains. Are there any other areas of concern in this area that we need to be taking into consideration? I think the overall thing that needs to be taken into consideration is how, as a society, as citizens in a society, we, can, we find ways of control and regulate it, the ways in which scientific research is done, um, the priorities that scientific research actually sets, um, and the goals and the ways that it goes. Thanks very much for your time, Stephen. Pleasure.